So Nate Silver fancies himself a, a data guy. This is why I've given him the nickname Data Boy. Um, but nowadays, the overwhelming majority of his tweets are, are just opinion. And they're like opinion while he pretends like they're more than that. And that is super frustrating. You would think these guys would learn a little bit of humility when they were totally convinced that Trump was going to lose the 2016 election, and then he didn't. You would think there'd be, like, you know, some grappling with that fact and maybe reeling it in a little bit with the opinion, especially since you, you know, you view yourself as the data guy. But no. But no, if anything, he's gotten worse. So let's take a look at his latest abomination of a hot take. He says, Mini thread. If you're someone on the left and you want to defeat Biden, a 76-year-old white guy, then maybe backing Sanders, a 77-year-old white guy, is not the way to do it. So in other words, identity politics, identity politics, identity politics, full stop. That's all there is. Well, here's an old white guy, and here's an old white guy. Nate, that disregards literally everything that's important and substantive. Literally everything. Everything. I mean, God damn it. We, Dick Cheney is an old white guy, and Noam Chomsky is an old white guy. Are we supposed to act like the fact that they're old white guys is even relevant? It's not even close to relevant. They're no... They're... They're polar opposites in every single conceivable way. Every way. <laughs> if you're on the left and you want to defeat Biden, a 76-year-old white guy, maybe backing Sanders, a 77-year-old white guy, is not the way to do it. Dude. This is the data guy. <laughs> data boy over here. All right, I have more from him. Like it or not, identity race, gender, age, is a major aspect of what people vote on. And you're probably not going to persuade many voters to back Bernie over Biden on the basis of electability or leadership since Biden was VP. Those are disadvantages for you, in fact. So you're really banking uh, on making up a lot of ground on Bernie being closer to the center of the Democratic electorate on policy, which is not clear he is. What? or voters agreeing with his institutional critique of the Democratic Party, which most Democrats won't. It's early, and Biden's post-announcement polling uh, bounce will probably fade, but it's formidable enough that it may maybe ought to promote some reassessments of strategy. Bernie is limited in the number of arguments he can make versus Biden when another candidate of the left might not be. Bernie is limited in the number of arguments he can make versus Biden when other candidates on the left might not be. How on earth is he limited when, and we're going to get to this later today, in fact, there's a thousand videos of Biden throughout his career going back as far as you want and going forward as far as you want, where he's just saying insane thing after insane thing, promoting insane policy position after insane policy position, praising Dick Cheney, saying he wants to bomb North Korea. I mean, the list goes on and on. I'd be here all day if I went through all of it. There could not be a starker contrast between a guy who's on video throughout his career being right about everything and warning everybody about everything and a guy who's been wrong about everything and looked for political convenience at all the times when it really mattered and he needed to show some spine and stand up for the right thing. D not only are you wrong, there cannot be a bigger contrast, Nate. It's not possible for there to be a bigger contrast. Also, when he says, well, it's not clear that Bernie's closer to the Democratic electorate than Biden is. You're the polls guy! You're the fucking polls guy, dude! Go to any poll on the actual issues, and you are proven wrong empirically, objectively, immediately! You name the policy, I'll show you the results, Medicare for all. What is it, over 80% of the American people, uh, excuse me, over 80% of the Democratic Party supports it now? Biden's fucking mealy mouth nonsense, expand Obamacare, public option, maybe. Medicare for all polls, way more popular than that. The shitty little centrist middle ground, sometimes Obamacare doesn't even poll over 50%. Medicare for all kicks its ass. 
So Bernie is way closer on that issue. Free college, Bernie is way closer on that issue. You go down the canon of policy beliefs, legalizing marijuana. Did you know there was a time years ago when Pat Robertson said, hey, I think it's kind of crazy that we're locking people up for, you know, taking a couple of hits of marijuana and having a small amount of marijuana on them. Seems like a waste of resources and seems like you're ruining people's lives over not much. And Biden came out and disagreed with Pat Robertson and said it's a gateway drug and we got to do what we got to do and we got to have these strong sentences and we got to lock them up for nonviolent drug offenses. He was to the right of fucking Pat Robertson on the issue of marijuana. Bernie's with 62% of the American people, way more, a, a higher percentage of the Democratic Party. Nate, literally almost any issue, almost any issue you can name, bar maybe two or three. But there's at least a dozen issues where Bernie is obviously closer to the majority of the Democrats, not just the majority of Democrats, the majority of the American people. So for you to say it's not clear he is closer to the Democratic electorate on policy, I'm actually starting to think you're being dishonest. You're just flat out, like, it's not like, whoops, I, Nate Silver, have made a mistake here. It's, I am, I am purposefully obfuscating for the sake of trying to put Bernie down. That's what it appears like. Because you're the data guy, and you don't know where the American people stand on all of these basic policies. You don't know where the Democratic Party stands, the Democratic base, the actual voters, on all of these policies. I mean, it's inconceivable. It's totally inconceivable. And then he says, like, well, most voters not gonna dis uh, are not going to agree with his critique of the institutional Democratic Party. What planet does Nate Silver live on where, like, you know, people just love the Democratic Party and love the Republican Party and have no problem with the institutions themselves? Hey, dude, you do know Congress's approval rating is, like, in the teens, right? You want to know why? Because they're the swamp. They're the establishment. They're representing the business, the business interests, the status quo. They're representing corporations and the rich. This idea of like, well, you know, critiquing the Democratic Party is not going to fly even in a, in a Democratic primary. What's the number? I think it's over 50% of the American people that feel like totally disenfranchised by the system and hate both parties. So you think an anti-establishment message can't work? Donald Trump got the Republican nomination bashing the Republican Party nonstop. It's a total myth. You want to talk about data? There is zero data to back up Nate's, Nate's claim. <laughs> They're not going to agree with his institutional critique of the Democratic Party. Nate, that's you in your own little bubble in Washington, D.C. or New York, where you're like surrounded by people who love the Democratic Party. Rah, rah, Nancy Pelosi! Yay! Her approval rating is in the fucking 20s, bro. The rest of the country does not reflect your establishment elitist sensibilities. He's, uh, uh, he's so massively out of touch. It is honestly stupid. I don't know if he's stupid and, or ignorant or dishonest. But, uh, you know, it, at this point, it really does look like he's being dishonest. And then he went on to say, I don't have the, quote, uh, the tweet here ready for you, but he went on to say, because so everybody in his replies was like, Policy is what matters. What are you saying? What are you saying? Just viewing it from an identity level. Um, everybody said, or he said, it's elitist to care about policy. It's elitist to argue that policy comes front and center. That is literally the opposite of elitist. If you're pushing for raising the minimum wage, do you have any idea how many people that helps? Do you have any idea? If you're arguing for Medicare for all, what you're saying is there are 44 million people who are uninsured right now. I want them all covered. And I want them to be, to be able to get quality health care. And I want to cut everybody's uh, costs down. When you argue on policy, hey, I want to end the wars, you're arguing to save lives, the lives of U.S. soldiers, the lives of innocent civilians overseas. He's arguing policy is elitist. No, what you're saying is elitist. As if people you know, can afford to sit around and go, I don't know, there's an old white man and there's an old white man. They're all the same. Maybe the way to beat that old white guy is not with another old white guy. But Joe Biden, and let's take Kamala Harris, she's a, a person of color and a woman, they are way more aligned ideologically than Bernie and 
and Biden. So there is a much starker contrast between Bernie and Biden than Kamala and Biden. Why are you obfuscating on this? Again, he doesn't care about the data, man. He really doesn't care about the data. And this is where he fucked up in 2016, too, where he kept assuming that the party, the party always wins out. And that's why he kept saying it's not going to be Trump. There were a thousand articles on 538. It's not going to be Trump. It's not going to be Trump. It's not going to be Trump. The tortured logic, by the way, was always like, sure, he's leading by like 15 points over the closest competitor. However, he seems to top out at like 35% support. 35% is not a majority of the, the Republican voting base. So we think the party is ultimately going to win out and they're going to get their establishment candidate. And he was just dead wrong. Now he's making the same arguments about Bernie, too. I responded to one of uh, the things he said the other day because it was literally the same argument. It was, sure, Bernie's the front runner in most polls, but he's not getting over 50%. So, there, I, I mean, there's not enough support there in the Democratic base, so he's not really uh, the front runner. But he's literally, he's leading. That's the front runner by definition. But it's not over 50%. You'd say the same shit against Trump and Trump ended up winning. He's such a hack. And I just noticed, like, however many minutes over... 10 minutes into this story, I still have Obama over my shoulder. <laughs> it's supposed to be data boy. There you go. God damn it, Nate. Listen, here's my advice to everybody. Yes, 538, when they just put their polling out there and they do an amalgamation of all the polling, that stuff is fine. Go look at it, you know, go check out where the race stands. Now, admittedly, in some polls, they just way oversample older voters. Those are the outlier polls where Biden's leading by like a zillion points, even over Bernie. Um, but 538 is okay for the polls. If you're going to 538 for the analysis of Nate Silver, man, you're fucking up. Because this speaks for itself. I didn't even need to come out here and critique this because it was obvious how ridiculous he was being. When he argues that it's not clear Bernie is more in agreement on policy with the Democratic voters... He has not even, he doesn't even have a bullshit case to make. Never mind an accurate one. He doesn't even have a way to bullshit that, which is why he doesn't even try, by the way. So, and when he focuses purely on identity, he's a joke at this point, man. He's a joke, and it is really sad to see. There was a time when he was right about every prediction he made because he just stuck by the polling. Now it's, I'm just going to give you my establishment spin on things, and he has no clue how out of touch he is.